What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. The 20th of May, we're taking a look here at Aerodrome Finance on this Monday. Aerodrome Finance currently up 1.84%. We have Bitcoin over on the right hand side of the screen, up 571 bucks, 0.8%. Guys, let's talk about a couple things here on the Aerodrome Finance. I want to welcome all of the new subscribers. Guys, welcome to the channel. Appreciate all you guys. So Aerodrome Finance currently, this morning anyways, on this Monday, is sitting up so far a higher low from yesterday. That is a very good thing to see. Yesterday's low, which would have been Sunday, looks like we hit a 97.954. Looks like today's low is 98. So although close, not yet a new low for the day. You might be wondering, what are we talking about lows for? Well, we want to start by, we want to start the day, start the next swing higher by a higher low. If you look back a couple days, we had our initial low over here on the 14th. That came in at uh, 87. The 15th, we had a low of 92, and that ended up being a big day to the upside. So that's basically a good visual of, you know, what I'm looking for. Same thing over here. We had our low on the 30th of 83. We, our next day, our low was 89, and that sprung a nice rally here. I want to talk about the, you know, basically what we're looking for here is we want to see well, we have a higher low here on the 14th. We have a higher low as of yesterday on the 19th. We're looking for a higher low and looking for that next leg to the upside, a higher low into a higher high. So we want to make new highs. We have the initial low, the lower high, the higher low, the lower high. What we want to see is a higher low. Let's say it's yes. Let's say it was yesterday. We'll know soon enough. Let me want to see a swing to the upside, guys, into a higher high. What we don't want to see is a break of our lows at 87, taking us back down to the the initial low there, you know, 85, 83, and then testing our some of our new levels down there at 79, uh, 58, etc. I want to talk about why. Why you can get yourself in trouble buying when prices are going lower. Let's go back here. Let's take a look at the the all-time highs here. So you have the highs over here. You have this big candle that um, was a big whipsaw event on the 12th of April, 2024. You had an inside day to follow. A couple, couple more quiet days to follow. Pretty negative day on the 16th, and then we started to get some more follow through to that to the downside on the 17th, and then prices stabilized, and then we started to trend lower. Let's say you started buying here on the 12th. You had an up day the next day, 2.24%. 2 another down day, 6.8. Another down day, 3.3. Another down day, 8.4. So just over those couple days, guys, let's say you started picking up right here. You're down 20% within a couple days. You're down 28% within a couple more days. You're down 40% in, you know, essentially less than two weeks. Compared to the, the, other, the other way of looking at that is buying strength. So let's look at this candle right here, the 17th of March. That was a 30% day. You might think to yourself, you know, hey, Aerodrome's up 30%. Why would I buy on that day? Well, you would find yourself up within seven days, up 20%, nine days, up 95%. 10 days of 118. Does it work every time? Well, no, of course not. Of course it doesn't work every time like that. But at least I think 
that over the long haul, if you end up buying strength in the markets, you're putting yourself in a much better position than buying weakness, especially after a long run. So if you get a long run in any kind of a market and the market starts to show some weakness and you think, okay, you know, I'm going to get a good deal, dollar cost averaging, buying to the downside, you just don't know how low it can go is basically what I'm saying here. It can go to zero. Okay, that's obviously extreme. More than likely, that doesn't happen. But it can go very low from where, um, you know, from where you're go going to enter. We don't know how we don't know how high it can go. It can go, you know, in theory, it can just keep on going higher. Will it? Probably not. But the point is, look at charts and. Think of them in a different way. Think of them as buying strength. When you see strength in a market, it's not me, it's not you, and it's not your buddy who's buying that and sending it higher. You know, it's not me who's sending Aerodrome up 37%. It's big money. Many, 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 many. Tens of millions of dollars are flowing into these assets and moving the price. And all you want to do is piggyback on them, next to them, with them. That's all you want to do. So something to consider. It's not financial advice, but I know people like the dollar cost average in. Can it work? Yes, it can. Can you get yourself in trouble very quick by buying some you know, when markets are down 20, 30, 40%, 10%, you can. They don't always bounce back is the thing. So you need to figure out what works for you. You need to figure out a way to, you know, write rules, write investing rules, write trading rules around that. Anyways, a little side note. So what we're looking for is we're looking for some more strength to come back into the aerodrome chart. We saw it right here on the 14th and 15th. Things are cooling off for a couple days here. We have a higher low as of today. Now, is it possible that this chart continues to show weakness and we start to trade lower? Well, of course it is. If Bitcoin fails and doesn't continue its move higher and actually gets weak, there's almost no chance Aerodrome will buck that trend and head higher. But... Bitcoin's breaking out, it's taking a breather. If it continues, there's almost a guaranteed chance, without saying there's a guaranteed chance, of Aerodrome getting ready to make a move that's going to look, in my opinion, guys, something like this. So, hey, that's what I'm hoping for. We'll see if it actually plays out. So I wanted to share that with you guys. We're looking for a... We're looking for the low to be in on this pullback. We're looking for a higher low. So far today, we have that. If you remember back a few days, we follow this whole move down. You know, we would, we would move the arrow. We would move the stake every day up lower low, 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 higher low. Didn't last too long, but that's what we're looking for essentially. And, you know, if we start to move like this, we're quickly, quickly going to see ourselves right back up to $1.28, $1.36, and then, you know, ultimately up there between $1.53 and $1.56 is what I'm looking for for this leg higher. But it starts with a, a low of the move, and then it, the next day, you want to see a higher low, and then you could say, okay, so... Potentially, the, the lower prices are behind us, and we're looking for that next leg higher. So far, these two candles on the 14th, and then as well as the 30th of April, look pretty good as are lows. We just need to keep a close eye on this, and we want to keep a close eye on Bitcoin. Bitcoin starts to get ugly and sell off. Like I said, there's almost no chance Aerodrome is going to be able to buck that trend, and we're heading lower, probably much lower.
These are very two important areas right here on the 14th and the 30th. So that's why we're putting all the energy into them and talking about them. So something to consider is think about, you know, buying strength in a market and not always buying weakness. Can it work over the long term in something like the stock market? That's a different animal. Can you go through years and years of down markets or basically, you know, lost money, as they say? You can. You can argue, you can argue collecting dividends over that time and stuff like that. But if you're watching this video, you're probably not interested in that. But usually in cryptocurrencies, unless you're talking about like Bitcoin or something like that, if you're dollar cost averaging to the downside, some of these smaller coins don't really come back to where they once were. Some of them do, but a lot of them won't. So if you're dollar cost averaging in, especially when you're near the high, it might not get back there. One at all, two years. So something to consider buying weak, buying strength, not buying weakness. So that's my thoughts here on Aerodrome, guys, and kind of a little bit of a side note about the markets and, you know, how to position yourself. You know, it's hard to drive it home. Once again, when you see big green candles in the market, that's big money moving these markets. It's not, you know, me or your neighbor, you know, who are buying small positions. That's just not, not who it is, unless your neighbor has tens of millions of dollars and he's and he's running the markets. If he is, you should probably learn something from him. Guys, let's take a look over at Bitcoin. Keep an eye on today's candle. We don't want to take out yesterday's lows. Those lows are 97,954. If we do take them out, that's fine. We just reset the clock and you know we watch today's candle and so on throughout the week. But like I said, if this thing starts to break out, we start to make higher highs. We should find ourselves pretty quickly right back up there at the dollar twenty-eight, dollar thirty-six, one fifty-three, one fifty-six. Uh, maybe not right away, but definitely uh, soon after. So up to one twenty-eight, you're at a twenty-six uh, percent move. Let's take a look over to Bitcoin. We're up five fifty-nine. Bitcoin pulling back a little bit. There is a chance Bitcoin can pull back to 64,375. There is a chance of that. We'll see. Um, really looking for Bitcoin to move its way up to 68,748. We are getting a nice breakout. We have a higher high. We have the higher low over here on the 10th. We'll see how far this pullback goes. But we're really looking for some continuation to the upside. Um, we'll see how long, obviously, this consolidation lasts here. Guys, thanks for watching. If you are not yet a subscriber, join us here on the channel. Let me know your thoughts on buying strength, not buying weakness. Let me know your thoughts on Aerodrome and Bitcoin and anything else you want to share down in the comments. We'll see. People call Aerodrome dead down in the comments. And, you know, hey, they might end up being right, but... Just, I'm curious if the markets don't go up every day, is a project dead or is the market dead? I mean, you know, the stock market doesn't go up every day. Over time, it does. Just, just curious. Same with Bitcoin. If Bitcoin goes down for a period of time or for a bear cycle, is it dead? Well, I mean, that's it depends on the on the time frame you're looking at. So it's not sustainable for markets to go straight up every single day. They can't hold that. It doesn't work. There has to be an ebb and flow with the market. There has to be an ebb and flow with the market. Just curious. You guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.